hey guys welcome back to another video today i'm gonna show you four different ways to blend cheap colored pencils i chose crayola because i think it's a brand that pretty much everybody knows and i'm also gonna use the super expensive karen dash luminance colored pencils right next to the crayola and with the exact same techniques i must say that i am pretty impressed with the final results so let's do it for this example, I'm gonna be using this hot press watercolor paper. Because it's really smooth, it's also great for graphite and colored pencils. My favorite paper of all time for colored pencils is this one, but I don't have any of it at the moment, so we'll have to use the watercolor paper. Before we start, just let me tell you something. I know I wrote layering and burnishing on the first method, but now I think I should have written things a bit different on all of them. Just to make it more clear, because you actually need to do layering on all of the methods. That is your basis. If you don't learn how to do the layering method, you won't be able to do any of these. Always remember to keep your pencils very sharp. That is going to make your life way easier, believe me. This is the pencil sharpener that I use, but you don't really need one like this. I just got it because my Prismacolor pencils kept breaking with normal sharpeners, and it also saves me some time. Okay, so the first method is layering and burnishing. As I said before, layering should be the very first technique you learn for colored pencils. It's all about learning how to control the amount of pressure on your pencil. You should always start as light as you can. I always prefer to start with the lighter color, so in this example, red is a lot darker, so I started off with yellow. Then you have to gradually alternate between the two colors, creating a transition by layering each color over the other. I think the secret to creating really smooth blends with colored pencils is patience. It's all about patience, really. Because for layering, which is your basis, you really need to take your time with each layer and be really gentle with your first couple of layers, especially if you're using cheap colored pencils. Because the Crayola are not as soft and creamy as the Caran Dash, you really need to concentrate and be really gentle. Otherwise, it's super easy to get harsh lines that might mess up your smooth transition. Okay, once you have all your layering done and you have all of your values how you need them to be, you can start burnishing. Burnishing means to layer gradually with more and more pressure to the point that you can no longer see the tooth of the paper. That means that your paper should end up 100% covered by the colored pencils and your drawing should feel really smooth and look polished and more professional. In the same way that I like to start off with the lighter color, in this case yellow, I also use it to make my final burnish. It's with the lighter color that you should kind of blend the whole thing together, applying as much pressure as you can. That being said, it's not easy at all to burnish with Crayola pencils. They don't blend together as easily as the Caran Dash or the Prismacolor, so with Crayola, you really need to focus and make your layering as smooth as possible because burnishing them in the end won't make a big difference. As you can see, the final result of each is not that different, but as I told you, and I know I sound like a broken record, the Crayola needed a lot more time, patience and concentration to not mess it up. The second method I will be showing you is using a colorless blender. I am using this one from the brand Prismacolor because it's the only one I have to be honest. And I think I have never used it in any drawing actually. This method is exactly the same as the first one. The only difference is that instead of burnishing with the lighter color, you will burnish with the colorless blender. I never use this method because I prefer to just use my colored pencils to blend with each other. But there is actually one advantage that I could find about this method and it is that you get a very nice matte finish with it. 
I don't really like this kind of shiny finish that you get with wax pencils, so I think I might start using this method for my portraits. The third blending method is blending with white. It's what some people also call saturation burnishing. This method is also exactly the same as normal burnishing. The difference is that you will use white to burnish but also to desaturate your layers. Because this method changes the value of your layers, it is a more advanced method of burnishing, but it's also essential for realistic colored pencil work, especially portraits and skin. The last method I want to show you is using a solvent. To be honest with you, I have never in my life used a solvent for any drawing but I found that this is the best method for cheap colored pencils. The pigments in colored pencils are held together by binders, so when you apply solvents such as paint thinner, odorless mineral spirits, or any other solvent, you dissolve the binder holding the pigment together and you can spread the pigment, getting a nice smooth transition without the need of burnishing. This method is probably the fastest and easiest to use with cheap colored pencils and it doesn't require you to layer your colors as perfectly as with the other three methods. So there you have it, the four basic blending methods with cheap Crayola pencils. Now I just want to tell you some of my final thoughts about colored pencil blending. If you think about it, all of these methods are basically the same. They all require you to make your layering and transition very smoothly. The only thing that changes is the burnishing part, which to me is pretty much the same in the end. Except for the solvent method, of course. For me, layering colored pencils requires way too much time. That is the reason why I now only work with a mixed media technique. I make my base layers with soft pastel pencils and or pan pastels and then I make my final layers with colored pencils and believe me, it saves me so many hours of work. So if you would like to see a similar tutorial about my mixed media method, let me know in the comments below. For now, that is all I have for you. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!